Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at the 26th installment, Dear God, What Are We Doing With Our Lives?, of what I like to call What I Eat Wednesdays, where we take a look at some of those What I Eat in a Day as a Fat Person videos on TikTok. 26 episodes deep. <sighs> in this episode, I'm gonna be sharing a recipe with you that I like to cook. So it's gonna be a little bit of what I like to eat in a day. Stick around for that. Before we take a look at these suckers, we must first apply comb to mustache. What I eat in a day as a fat person who's not on a diet. Toast with peanut butter. coffee and some coffee cake. I think I caught a glimpse of that coffee and it was not black, my friend. Hold on. Slow down. Enhance. Okay, yeah, I can see there is clearly milk and cream in that coffee. So the coffee and the coffee cake are going to give you that blood sugar spike that I'm always talking about. Second coffee with more sugar and cream. Make sure you're keeping track of those liquid calories. They do count. It doesn't make you full, but it counts and it's empty calories. Chicken potatoes and green beans with Dijon sauce. Is that chicken breaded or is that just the Dijon sauce? I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and assume it's just the Dijon sauce because you wouldn't want to bread the chicken when you're already eating some potatoes. You already got your carbs there. Uh, you would be good to go with that. Prosecco. That's some sort of sweet wine or something like that. Either way, it doesn't matter. Alcohol is going to destroy all of your fitness goals. I know that a lot of you don't want to hear that, but it is true. Besides being empty calories, alcohol lowers your testosterone level for up to three weeks. I know that a lot of you are women, so you might not want the testosterone <laughs> anyway, but it also has several deleterious effects to your health. I recently picked up drinking again myself uh, for the past couple of weeks, and um, yeah, I'm quitting again. Done. Prosecco is a fancy name though, isn't it? It lends legitimacy to your alcoholism. I wasn't getting drunk, I was having some Prosecco. Mamma mia. I'm sorry, is that offensive? I'm sorry. Slice of pizza. And then she shows two slices of pizza. Since alcohol is a toxin that is processed in your liver, like sugar, it puts all other metabolic processes on hold until your body is done processing it. And we know that your body isn't done processing it for quite a while. The whole next day, your body's still trying to get that out of you. So if you were in the middle of burning fat or gaining muscle, um, that's going to go on hold until that alcohol gets out of there. And a Diet Coke. I love when people eat a bunch of processed carbs and all this type of wacky stuff, and then they have a Diet Coke. You're like, what are you doing? Although I hear that some people actually like the flavor. Think back in your memory and think of the first time that you tried Diet Coke. Did you like the flavor upon first tasting it, or did you have to get used to it, and now you crave it, and you must have it, because it's infected your gut's microbiome, which is your second brain, and it's changed the way you think about it. It's like when I first tried kombucha, I was like, ew, what the hell, this is like vinegar, dude, this is absolutely disgusting. Then I tried it a couple more times. It got better and better <laughs> with each time I tried it. It has infected my gut's microbiome with some sort of parasite that makes me crave it. How about that? Obsessive thought and baby prevention. Okay, why are they always sharing the medications that they took? Does being on medication make you more marginalized or is it like a substitute for a personality? You can just add it to your list of things. I'm a Leo, I'm a this. I'm a that. Stop identifying with your labels. How about you just be Anne or whatever the hell your name is? 
It's fine to have whatever going on with you, but if you're always telling people about it, um, I don't know, you're trying to get some kind of weird brownie points. Alright, let's take a look at this bad boy and add it up. Alright, alright, you started the day off with some toast and peanut butter, love. I would recommend you put a big old steak right on top of that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the weirdest combination ever? But you would have some dank protein to start the day off, right? You're like, for breakfast I had some waffles, and you show yourself putting a waffle on the plate, and then BOOM! In comes a steak right on top of that sucker. Then I'd be like, alright, alright. Oh yeah, isn't there a thing like chicken and waffles? Isn't that a thing? I've never had it myself, but I think it's fried chicken, right? So, I don't know man, that's just additional carbs, and they're fried carbs, which changes their properties entirely. But I digress, let's keep adding this up. Then you had coffee with cream and sugar, coffee cake, and more coffee with cream and sugar. All right, so your entire morning was spent on a sugar high. You must have been pretty delirious from that, but at some point you managed to come back down from space and get some chicken potatoes and green beans in you. That is amazing. There's nothing negative I have to say about that. Then you had some Prosecco. I would not recommend that. Later on, for what I'm guessing was dinner, you had two slices of pizza and a Diet Coke. You had two slices of pizza. First of all, you said it was one, but you showed two. But even two, I'm having a hard time buying that. I can eat like five, six pieces of pizza myself, and I'm not exactly obese anymore. Back when I was heavier, I could eat an entire pizza by myself because it's pizza. It's delicious. Who eats two slices of pizza and a Diet Coke for dinner, dude? Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and add it up with what they have presented. All right, this is going to be a low one. I only see one good source of protein throughout the day. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and count the peanut butter. I know there's some protein in peanut butter. Um, I wouldn't call it a great source of protein, but I'm going to go ahead and award you a point there. And also for the chicken, potatoes, and green beans. I'm going to take away a point for the Prosecco. Take away a point for all the sugary stuff there. Okay, I've reached a decision. On this day, I'm going to have to give this one a 2 out of 10. I know there's protein in peanut butter, but not all protein sources are equal. Next, what I eat in a day is a fat goth girly. Do goths eat differently than uh, other people? Or are we just going to cry before we start eating it? Or after? No offense, goths. Get dunked on. Get dunked on. Two fat as cups of coffee. Is that some uh, Smucker's caramel sundae syrup right next to it? You're not going to put that in the coffee, are you? You're getting crazy. With 87 spoonfuls of sugar. Ah, oh, we got another sarcastic one where she's like, 87 spoonfuls of sugar because I'm fat. You're being all sarcastic and stuff. Oh, you really stuck it to us. Okay, two scoops of sugar went into that coffee, and then this coffee mate, pumpkin spice, chemical garbage. And a whole bottle of creamer. <laughs> They're really sticking it to you, huh? How dare you assume that somebody got overweight from eating in excess? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. We all know that weight is genetic, which is why weight loss surgery works, right? Because it shrinks your stomach and all of a sudden, what do you know? You lose weight. How about that? I guess it kind of proves that it's all diet. Okay. Was it like really hot or it was just so sweet that it went right to the brainstem? the fit all right let's see what this says i didn't want my mom to know i was drag racing for 20 years so i told her i was in prison okay that's kind of weird <laughs> what? Well, that's a long drag race dude it took you 20 years just to get to the end of the finish line leftover korean food my mother-in-law made us all right so it looks like we've got some chicken uh rice perhaps and some corn and then on the top right, we can see something else that is not being displayed. Something in a bag with sauce. Hawaiian punch. Miso soup. This was the best ever. All right, I think that's some kind of wacky broth with chunks of tofu in it.
the Korean marinated chicken was fire, too. All right, so you're eating the Korean marinated chicken that you showed earlier with the soup. And then hot pot for dinner. All right, that's not very descriptive. We've got a lot of different, uh, well, like vegetables and meat and stuff, and we cook it in a broth or something right at the table with some noodles of some sort. All right, let's see what we got here. That looks like some fried carbs on the bottom right. Um, maybe some meat up there in the middle. And then some... And then some of those Madagascar giant centipedes on the top right, perhaps? What is that, like a sushi roll right there? Uh, had to eat all the sushi slash sashimi the restaurant had since that's what fat people do. I see. Sarcasm will get you nowhere, ma'am. I make the best hot pot sauce. You made it? I thought you went to a restaurant. Inaki mushrooms are God's greatest invention. I don't think I've had that one. I don't think I've had inaki mushrooms. I'll have to try it. More water before bed. That wasn't a whole lot of food from what I saw. Um, Perhaps it wasn't all the healthiest choice, but let's look at it and add it up. Coffee with two spoons of sugar and creamer. Although they said 87 spoons of sugar and a whole bottle of creamer. I joke when I say I'm the best in the booth, but a lot of truth is said in jest. All right, and then you had chicken, rice, and corn. Some Hawaiian punch. So you didn't even have breakfast. Your breakfast was coffee with two spoons of sugar and creamer. Then for lunch, you had the Korean chicken, rice, and corn with some Hawaiian punch and miso soup. And then for dinner, you had hot pot, which was sushi, fried carbs, noodles, vegetables, mushrooms. Even though there's a soda in here and more sugar than there should be. If you ate like this, you would be losing weight, I assure you. Anyway, I digress. Let me get to the point here. Let's see. Started the day off with a blood sugar spike. Chicken, rice, and corn was pretty good. Miso soup and hot pot was pretty good. All right, I've come to a decision. I'm gonna have to give this one a... 3 out of 10. Since I'm going to be splicing in a video of something that I eat in a day, I'm going to keep this one short reacting to their videos. What's that you say? Get rid of all the phonies. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's not what you said. You said, let's see your what I eat in a day video. All right, coffee cup. I'll show you. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Oh wait, what are we talking about? Oh yeah, my video. Let's go. Don't you ever say I just walked away I will always want you Something, something, some, something, something, some I will always want you I came in like a wrecking ball Run, 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 run Whoa! <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the cooking show. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make king oven beef brisket. I'm always being asked what I eat in a day. So I decided to share a little recipe with you. This is a brisket that you can make in the oven and it's freaking delicious. Let's go. The lighting and audio quality on this one's going to be a little bit different. First, we're going to preheat the oven to 350. While that's happening, we're gonna prepare a spice mixture to rub on this sucker. Get yourself a bowl to prepare the spice mixture in. Two tablespoons chili powder, two tablespoons salt, one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder. Did you know when it has this kind of lid so you can put this in here? And then you can go like this and pull it and it will level it off. One tablespoon black powder, black pepper. <laughs> what if they just had a seasoning that was just called black powder? Like, what the hell is that? Like, freaking gunpowder? What the hell? It doesn't fit in this one. What are you doing? What are you doing, Kirkland? Dude, this is malarkey. Now we're gonna put something in that goes against everything I stand for. A tablespoon of white sugar. It's okay, though, because the bag has assured me that it's vegan. There's no beef in this sugar like there normally is. I don't know, man, that's really weird. Two tablespoons dry mustard. All right, get yourself a bay leaf. And you'll know that somebody's serious about cooking if they have one of these. A mortar and pestle. Put your bay leaf in, begin pestling. 
go around in a circle a little bit, give her a little back and forth. See, there's all these grooves in there that line it that help you crush it against them. I got this one from Bed Bath & Beyond. That didn't really make a lot of bay leaf powder from that one bay leaf. Uh, now we're gonna stir this mixture up. You may be asking yourself why I'm using a tablespoon to stir. Um, you know, that's, that's some advanced cooking techniques that um, I learned from Gordon Ramsay. I just don't want to dirty another spoon, man. Why? Why? This one's okay. Give a little scoop and toss. Give a scoopy toss. All right, let's go. Crush up those chunks of dry mustard that are in there. The recipe calls for a four pound brisket, but whatever. I'm using the seven pound brisket. Hey, right, really, so let's put our spice rub on there. Gonna want to rub this baby. The spice, the sweet, sweet spice. Flip it over and rub this side as well. You're gonna wanna cook it fat side up. As you can see, we've got a brisket that is nicely seasoned. We're gonna cook it with the fat side up so the fat melts and bastes through the meat. Cook it for one hour, uncovered at 350. Let's pretend we're in an infomercial for a minute. Putting things in the oven the old fashioned way was damn near impossible. There's got to be an easier way. But thanks to the latest advent in technology, we have this new invention called turning on your goddamn brain. Oh, finally. Oh, jeez. whoo. Cook it for one hour, uncovered, fat side up. I had to take a knee to tell you that. I'm proposing to you. Will you please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment? All right, I'll see you back here in one hour. Oh, maybe I should cut the video. Come on, let me just run it for an hour, man. It gives me more money. <laughs> All right, folks, welcome back. It's been one hour cooking this sucker uncovered at 350. Now we're gonna add some beef stock. Not beef broth, don't you dare put beef broth in there. Stock. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm sure there's a difference because there's two different products. The oven keeps clicking. We're gonna cover it a half inch with broth. All right, now that we've added half inch of broth to the bottom of this pan, we're gonna cover it and put it back in the oven at 300 degrees for three more hours. You wanna hear a spooky story? Sorry if you can hear the baby screaming in the background. Babies are gonna baby. She probably wants food or water again. God, these things are annoying. Just kidding, I love my baby. So since we're cooking this for another three hours at 300 degrees, at about an hour and a half, we're gonna add some potatoes and carrots to this sucker. I'll see you then. I didn't mean to start a war. I just wanted you to let me in. Man, that's powerful stuff. Oh, Miley, <laughs> what has become of you? All right, so last time I told you that we're cooking it for three hours at 300 degrees. It's about an hour and a half into that, and I'm gonna add some potatoes and carrots. We're gonna do this like something you would make in a crock pot, pretty much, but it's a brisket, so it's way better. Since this is a giant brisket, it's like seven and a half pounds, we're gonna be eating off of it for like three days, probably, at least. So I'm putting a bunch of potatoes and carrots in here. I don't think these potatoes will need to be submerged in the liquid, because we still got like an hour and a half on here. That's one, two, three, four bags of carrots. A little bit of Sesame Street impersonation for you there. The recipe that I'm following is for a four pound brisket. This is a seven and a half pound brisket. So it might take longer to cook anyway. We'll see, we'll just let it go. What the hell? What is this? This is in the carrot bag. Is this a carrot shaving? Dude, what the heck is this? Okay, it is in fact carrot. Um, thank God. <laughs> I was like, what is this, a freaking lemon peel? What are they doing? Well, I'll just eat it. No, it's, it's abnormal. I'm not gonna just eat it. I'm gonna put it in here and somebody else can eat it. <laughs> All right, I changed the camera angle just so you can see it going into the oven. You know, I'm lying, lying over here. This ain't no Hollywood set, baby. All right, so that's got about an hour and a half to go. After about a half an hour, I'm gonna add some onions in there to kick this sucker up a notch. All right, it's been a half an hour, and we're gonna add some onions to this and let them cook in there for the last hour. Hopefully that's long enough. Gotta hone it up a little with the sharpening steel.
You don't have to bust the onions apart like this, but I want them to cook quicker. Back into the oven. We're gonna let that go for like another hour and it should be done. All right, we'll taste this after it cools. All right, here we have brisket, some onions, some potato, and some carrots. The brisket is very delicious. You should try this recipe. I'll put a link to the recipe in the description below. All right, I'm gonna have to give this one a seven out of 10. You know how a meal could possibly be a 10 out of 10? Uh, if this beef was organic, and if I grew all this produce myself, that would make it a 10 out of 10. Because then you would know exactly what's in it, right? When they say it's organic, mm, I think their version of organic might differ from ours a little bit. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.